Hey, how are you doing? In this video, we're going to look at the difference between testability and automatability. Automatability? Why do people say testability, Alan? Probably because automatability is too hard to pronounce. What do you think? I think that's probably true. Automatability. The ability to automate. How easy it is for us to automate the application. That's probably why we say testability, even though testability is not what we're talking about testability is how easy is it for us to test the app. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show uh, this as an example. I'm going to use my application Shatterscan. I wrote an application, a Twitter feed reader called Shatterscan, which is online. Um, you log in using OAuth and do your normal Twitter stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at how testable is this and how can I make it more testable? Because in essence, every app is testable, right? You give us an app, we can test it. Because if a user can use it, we can test it. But we can make it more testable by making it easier for the app to tell us things that help us in our testing. Similarly, pretty much any app can be automated, but we can make it easier to automate. We can make it more automatable if we do certain things to it. And in this one, it's testable. And testability is really important. So the first thing that I'm going to... So let's have a quick look at the app. May as well. So I got the app, it's online at chatterscan.com. I log in via OAuth, I log in, and I can see my Twitter feed in different ways. Now the reason, the way that this works is it allows me to filter my tweets. So at the moment it's um, sh only showing posts with links. So it's not showing me any retweets, it's not showing any replies, it's not showing any posts without links. This lets me go through my Twitter feed fast. So out of the hundred tweets that I asked for, it's given me back 63, of which it's shown me 33, because only 33 of those has links. So this is what I use when I'm reading Twitter to get um, information, stay up to date, see what people are promoting, that kind of thing. So how testable is this? Right, well, I've got a GUI. I can use the GUI. It's a web application, so I can um, see all the HTTP traffic, things like that. None of that is from the app. None of that is testability because of the app. That's because it's a web app and I've got those tools. What might be useful for testing this app is some insight because I've got filters here. It's telling me that it's showing only posts with links, but how do I know for sure? Or how do I know what tweets it's actually come back? With? How do I know how many were returned from the API? Because all the API requests are made on the server, so I don't get to see those. I can't put those through a proxy and see the requests that this app is making to Twitter because that's happening on the server. So all I've got to work with is this. So maybe if there was a kind of debug mode, so let's write this down. And what would help me is a, a debug mode to have more insight into the API calls. What is returned? Also, um, when the filters get more complicated, I, I won't know why a particular item has been shown in the feed. What filter rules have been matched? I'll leave it like that. Displaying the tweet. So that'd be useful for me when I look at it to know what is happening. But, and if we change the app to do this, we've got a risk that people might use whatever facilities that we're putting in here, and that might slow down the server. So anytime we ask for extra features to make things testable, we have to consider, is there a risk on production? So risk that might take more time to process on the server and cause more load. And this isn't a, a robust <laughs> server. This is just my normal server. It doesn't scale. If, if thousands of people come out of this, it will probably bring the server down. I don't know. Um, I do have a test environment where I can use it. it. doesn't help anyone else. So I do have a test environment. So things that we've got going for us is testability. I do have a test environment. Now, at this point, I'm not considering automating it. Don't care how automatable it is or otherwise, because I'm not doing that yet. I'm trying to test it. And all my testing for this app has been 
exploratory. I don't have any unit tests on this. It's written in PHP. It was a proof of concept kind of hacked together. It's getting to the point now where I probably do want to start putting unit tests on. I probably do want to start automating it through the GUI, but I'm not really looking at that yet. I'm at this point still figuring out how to test this and still I'm still adding features to this and experimenting to see what helps me work with Twitter. So I don't want too much maintenance on the side for that because one person doing this in their spare time can't do everything, but I can have the development work support me more and make it more testable. A debug mode be now I do actually have a debug mode built in. I'm gonna get the code up to remind me what it is, because a debug mode's a really good idea. Extra insight into what's going on. Now I didn't create this debug mode to make it more testable. I did <laughs> because I didn't have any unit tests. I didn't have any automated execution. Things were going wrong. I had no idea why things were going wrong. It's a proper debug mode. Developer put it into debug. But had I started from how can I make this application easier to test, I might have had it there from a test perspective. So if I go debug mode equals true, then well look, there's extra stuff coming through. So I've actually got a debug mode. Extra features might take more time. So at the moment, this is live on the main server. Now I'm going to be doing this video over a couple of different takes. And so you might see clothes change, hair's going to change, different things are going to happen. So you will not be able to use this debug mode in live, right? Because I'm going to, I'm going to mitigate that risk by having debug mode not report in live. Now I might have a special but I, I still want to debug in live, right? Because there might be environmental issues. There might be differences between test environment and not. So I'm going to have to have some config that is granular enough to allow me to turn on debug mode in live, but off by default. Okay. Now, anytime we do config to toggle things in live or, or whatever, that might increase a risk so i'll have to figure out how to do that in such a way it doesn't add risk but you will not see this so essentially what have i got here i can see the parameters that have come through in here i can see what i'm going to be sending through into the twitter api so that's good i can see exactly what has been sent to the api i can debug there and what else i'm pretty sure that if i so look so there's feeding through um some of the reasons so something has been ignored. Clearly this hasn't been ignored, but something has been ignored. So if I inspect that, I think there we go. So I did actually in debug mode in the comments in the HTML, and this is, this is why um, we don't want this live because it creates a huge page. It puts so much in the HTML. And I put in a particular object and the testing quality is pretty hard to track. Da, 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 da. So there's no link in that. It's not displayed. So I could really put more information in the, the debug output. And why was this one included? Now I know it was included because there's a link, but I don't think in my debug output, I've put in any reasons why it's included. So what I want is Okay, so I, I will do that. <clears throat> Extra things for me to do um, and make the environment stuff. So what else might help me when I'm testing this? So at the bottom, it makes, look at that, ignore, 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 ignore. it makes requests to the server. So there's no debug information in there, but I can see the debug at the top to know what server requests were made so i have some insight into uh, api calls but i don't have any insight i don't think into the actual response right so look um so chances are filters is probably going to make the request around right about here object home feed is that everything no so it's not showing me the entire payload that's coming back it's showing me on a thing by thing basis filters yeah so it could, in theory, show me the full response that comes back. 
just as an extra because if, it, if it's not going to go live on the production environment it doesn't really matter how much information we get i don't necessarily know what information we've got but i've got that information there for free this would slow down the actual processing if i put debug mode in so there's again trade-off in terms of testability but i'm not using this for performance that's one thing so that would help me um this so i can see in the debug information the stuff that is not shown so that's john griffiths john griffiths by the way don't know how this is going to show up on the green screen it's the author of 98 percent pure potato which is an excellent book on uh marketing uh well worth reading so <laughs> that's why john's in my feed just thought i'd show you that now but let's see so this is john's feed here name is this his content is this the full thing for his content looks like it planning above and beyond that's his website just posted a new episode great i've got all the debug mode i've got all the information about each post in there so that's useful for debugging and for the stuff that's ignored we have all the information for each post as well it's just not necessarily obvious in there or do we so I'm not exactly sure what applies to what here. So this debug output isn't necessarily helping me debug because it did look like that had a link in there. It could be talking about that one, which to the untrained eye looks like it has links in there, but I think these are actually images. Let's double check. It is HTML. Let's do a double check because I think this is working correctly. But let's double check that debug is. So I think that's an image. So that's a link to a post. Look at that. So that's not a... So I wonder what that looks like in the real world. Let's have a look, see if it's obvious. So that's in URLs, but the URL is not in... So it says it's in the string, but where's the display length? Twitter API works differently than other APIs, by the way. Just because you see things in here doesn't actually mean that that's um, what it would show. Because the like, string 146 but the actual display text is only up to 106 and it's got media in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this ID. If I do view tweet, that will show me how to state so That's not the right tweet. That one is the right tweet. And that's not the right tweet. There we go. So I think that is 106. Is it? 83. Okay. I'm not convinced that my application is showing me everything it should do that might be a bug i'm not sure why that's not in there so this is why i want a debug mode but i want it easier to read so that i know why it's ignored has it ignored that post or is it talking about ignoring this one what is which one is it i know it's probably not this one because that one is actually shown so this one ignore no link but it looks like there's a link so why is there not a link so i need to know the reasons why there's not a link in there because it looks very much like there is a link in there hmm. but this is why see this was put in for debugging and it gave me the information i needed at the time when i was debugging but in terms of testing it i'm now getting confused i'm getting confused by the debug stuff that i put in there to help me when i was developing but now that i'm testing it's not good enough it's not accurate enough it's not readable enough i'm having to jump through hoops to see why this is and why it isn't it'd be nice if it showed me parts of the information like a link to the tweet so that i could at very least jump through to that tweet more easily and see what is going on so the debugging output the testability output needs to change so i will fix that and um, to make it more testable for me to help me test this and when we come in to the next section which for you will be in a couple of I don't know, seconds but for me probably some days we'll see what i've actually done to it to make this more testable because testability is different from automatability automatability the ability to automate it so that's why we don't like words like automation how automatizable is it hmm because automatization is a word so automatizable maybe i should say that how automatizable is this not how automatable how automatizable i can say that testability automatizability i could say that can you say that i can say that see you in well now and we're back so for me uh, this is the next day so I, I spent probably two hours maybe doing some development work and notes and some testing 
yesterday on the updated application after um, putting in the testability. Because remember, well, I don't need to tell you because it was two seconds ago. So let me quick recap for my benefit. What I said I needed was more debug output that was readable that supported me. Then that information fed into me as a developer. And I didn't want to spend a lot of time formatting and developing and everything else because I needed to make sure that the right information was coming back. So I built an MVP, a minimum viable product, to put the minimum set of information in that met my need in the easiest way possible. And the easiest way I did that was by reformatting the code, refactoring the code to make it consistent in how it did debugging, which allowed me to then put toggle in so that on production, if I go into, let me log into production, and we saw that debug view was with debug mode equal to true, and there are no debug links in there. There is no debug information in here because we had a risk that if I put this into production, people might try and use it, might be load on the server, might be security issues, all that kind of stuff. So we're not doing that. On the test environment, I can do that. So if I go off to the test environment, see it's like a different screen. It says development environment at the top because I'm a pro, right? Two environments, look at that. So if I then do debug mode equals true in here, then we can see we've got a debug mode. I, this is pretty much what was there before. I did experiment with putting in all the information from the server, but it didn't add any value because I iterate over that and put in information for each tweet. So all that I was getting from the message return was that the array of messages had the same number of items that is shown at the bottom. So all I got was this number, 75, seen in array. So as a developer, I didn't see any point in doing that. It increased the page load size. And as a tester, I gave no value from it. So what do we gain now? What have I done to make this more testable? Well, if I inspect this, this is a tweet that was shown. There we go. So the tweet that was shown, all the information about that tweet that came directly from Twitter is above it. And below it, I can now see why a tweet was included because we were allowed to include links and it found a link in there and I can see all the other reasons why it was excluded. Now what I also found useful was showing the tweet that is rendered and the tweet that is actually brought back from Twitter and what Twitter is telling me is the display range because this information showed me um, a potential bug in Twitter. I'm not sure if it was a bug or not. I think there's something odd about the way that Twitter calculates this and the character set it's using. But when something is ignored, I can, can now see the ignored tweet. So I can see the tweet that's shown, and then I can see it ignored this tweet. I don't know what tweet this is. And so apologies to the person that we look at when I show this that we've ignored their tweet. Now, I almost made this a clickable link, but as I was using this in Chrome, I realized, well, if I highlight this, I can just go to it. So I'm not actually obscuring anything. So here we go. This has no links in it. So that'd be why it was ignored. And if I then inspect this, because it's now a lot easier for me to inspect because it's an actual DOM element rather than just random text. It's actually a paragraph now. I can see that it's ignored because it doesn't have a link. And that's pretty useful. Now, now I have something in here. Now I'm satisfied that it uh, shows all the tweets that are in there. Um, information that's sent through to the Twitter API and see what filters are coming through on the page when I set the filters, which allows me then to, when I do next page, make sure that the, the right variables were carried through. This is now testable. So let's very quickly see. I'm just going to have a quick look through some of these tweets to see if we can find someone that exposes the potential bug. I'll fast forward this because it might take me a little while. <laughs> Okay, so this one's interesting. This isn't included in my list. Clearly it's a, a link. The reason it's not included is because Twitter has told me that it's possibly sensitive. And I've, I've defaulted to not showing possibly sensitive. In fact, I don't even have a filter for that. If, if it's come through as possibly sensitive, then I've just said, yeah, don't show me. I don't want to curate anything that's possibly sensitive. Now I don't understand why. That doesn't look at anything possibly sensitive in there. So I guess just a heads up, she can't, you might want to have a look at that and see why your Twitter feed is being marked as sensitive. But 
Otherwise, that one theoretically should come through. Now, I have to make a decision at this point. Do I make a filter for allowing possible filter positively sensitive ones coming through? Possibly will now that I've seen that, but I don't see any reason why that'd be flagged as possibly sensitive. That's not the bug I was looking for. What I'm looking for are tweets that have links in it, but my application doesn't find them because the display range in Twitter is calculated in such a way that the link is off the end. I'm, I'm looking for a specific tweet like that. So this one's interesting. See that clearly is a link. It's not a quote. It's not possibly sensitive. I can see the link in there. The display range is 0 to 75, so that's in the actual display range. But my code is saying we'll only show things that actually include rings, and that's saying it didn't include one. So that is quite possibly a bug in my code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that, put that in my notes. Now at this point, this is really a debug issue and a unit test type testing because I've given enough information in there to figure out why because it's really about parsing this. Now what I find interesting sometimes is that sometimes Twitter has special characters in here so I need to investigate why, don't know, I need to investigate. That's not quite the, the tweet that I was looking for but that's, the, that's an example of it. So this is a type of tweet where even though there's a an HTTPS in there, my code isn't picking that up as an HTTPS and I do not know why. I'm going to stop there simply because I could go randomly tangents. But the point is, I now have information in here that lets me see what is ignored, see why it is ignored, helps me start to find potential problems. I mean, that I could see that in the the log here in the observation part here. So I need to find more examples of that to try and f figure out this particular bug that I'm dealing with to see whether I can blame Twitter or not. And I might have to do some special things in my app in order to help me with that. But the point is I can now do it because this app is more testable. Now what I should mention is, again, there's a difference between testability and automatizability. In theory, this could support automated execution because I can get this URL, I can get the page, I can get the information that's that's um, showing, but I would have to parse this. So I guess that's because that's not quite JSON. I mean, it's a PHP var dump. It's not that hard to process. I could probably convert this fairly easily into JSON to make it easy to parse, but I'd have to do some work. If this was really designed to support automatizability, then this would probably be JSON. And I would probably be able to make a, an API request on my app to get the information back to effectively simulate the processing. Now this app doesn't have an API because it's using the Twitter API and it's GUI based. If I have a quick look in here, none of these links are have, have IDs. None, are, this, none of this is designed for automatizability, finding particular um, tweets in there. I mean, I've got a class in there for tweet text. I don't have much else in there because this debug information is in there as comments. It might actually be hard for um, a true like web driver to pull it out from the DOM because it's not necessarily <laughs> accessible in that I don't think you can pull out comments from the DOM. You have to go and get the source in WebDriver. So even this when this is shown in the DOM view, I'm not sure WebDriver has access to it, but I haven't tried. I haven't honestly haven't tried to pull comments out using WebDriver, but I don't think so. So it's not automatizable, but it's increased the testability, right? Because testability is different from automatizability or automatability, automatability automatability. Testability is different from automatability. And that's the main point of this. So even though it's like what, 40 minutes of an example, but it's an example of why we want testability, how we go about identifying testability, how we know that we've got testability because it improves our testing. Then working through, I can see now the absolute benefit of this, but it's not, we must never 
confuse it with making an application more testable and making an application more automatable, right? They are different concepts. Hopefully you'll use a different word and you'll figure out how to pronounce it, whether it's automatability or automatizability, but don't say testability when you mean I need the ability to automate it. So if this video is useful for you, remember to subscribe on YouTube where all the videos are there and then you can get announcements or follow us on the Facebook page, facebook.com slash evil tester. Either way, you'll get announcements on the videos that we release.